Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. Got a uh, brand new knife to show you today, but before I get into that, I want to tell you how I came to uh, have this knife in my possession, why I bought it, and how you can help me make my future knife reviews better. Now, it occurred to me, I was recently down at the Pathfinder School. Uh, maybe some of you saw the video, it's on Dave's channel. Uh, we did a review of the Chris Kane Companion Knife. And we were talking about knives as we generally do and comparing my stuff to his stuff. I have not always really concerned myself with all of Dave's criteria for a knife because I don't do everything that he does with his. Uh, he is really strictly mostly wilderness survival bushcraft and I'm not. I'm a little bit of everything, more of proper mentality, preparedness, having gear, but I still like to go out in the woods and that stuff. But it occurred to me as I'm reviewing some of these knives, the things that I say are a good bushcraft knife, other people may not agree with that assessment because of these criteria. So here's what I'm going to start doing. When I do a knife review, I'm going to grade it on two scales. Uh, one, I'm going to give it a bushcraft score. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use Dave's six criteria for what a knife needs to have. He has these on his, if you go to his store, a lot of the knives have a little uh, picture on the page. And it's like, this has all the things uh, Dave wants you to have for what you'll need to use your knife for at a Pathfinder class. And that is a 5 inch blade, high carbon steel, full tang, 90 degree spine, ability to strike with flint and be non-coated. Now, me for the most part, I tend to go for most of those. I don't worry about the coating generally because a lot of times I'll take the coating off myself. And I don't worry about striking with flint because I don't mess with flint. I got butane torches and ferro rods out the wazoo. Uh, I'm just not, me personally, I'm not that interested in going that far into it. That's more of a not really primitive, but more like 18th century long hunter type stuff. And I, I'm just not, that's not me. So I don't worry about that. But people that are watching knife reviews that I do, they may be into it. So that's important. So it'll have a score one through six based on how many of those criteria that particular knife meets. Then we come to the second part, and that's what I need your help with. I need to know what are this let's just keep it simple since we've got six on this let's have six criteria for a general knife just knife in general what's six criteria that I should be looking at that I should be grading on and that's why I'm having a hard time deciding which is which because some of that stuff that I generally put in there is part of the Dave's knife criteria and it can be still but I'm a, I think like ergonomics of the handle should be one uh, type of grind, steel, ease of sharpening. That's what I need your help with. So post your comments in the section below and let me know what you think that I should do with these future reviews. But in order to do these reviews and to able to have something compared to, I needed a bushcraft knife benchmark. So what I did is I got two of Dave's knives. I've got this brand new one here today, which I'm a really big fan of, and this is the Habilis Bush Tools Pathfinder Trade Knife. And this fits all of Dave's criteria. And I always liked this knife, but I never really pulled the trigger on it. But after I did pull the trigger for this and I started messing with it, and stuff I'm going to show you here in a minute, it's like, I really like this knife. And with the other knives that I've recommended before, you're going to have to decide which features are most important to you because it's going to be a tight race in the $100 mark. This is about $109.99 is what this cost. Uh, and very much worth it, especially if you're not just having it as a survival knife, but a survival knife that you want to do bushcraft stuff with too. The other knife that I don't have yet, I should have probably Tuesday. I've been looking at this knife since 2011. I finally pulled the trigger on it. I got a PLS K1. So those are going to be my two bushcraft knife, bushcraft slash survival knife.
benchmarks that I'll be comparing all my future knives to to give it its bushcraft score. So hopefully that will make my knife reviews a little bit more sensible and be more of a benefit to people when they're trying to choose whether or not they should purchase this knife or not. Okay, so here we are with the newest knife, which I am already really liking. Pathfinder Trade Knife by Habilis. Right off the bat, these run for about $109.99 on the Pathfinder School Store. They weigh about 0.70 pounds. It has a 1 8 inch thick spine, high carbon steel. I'm fairly certain it's 1095. I'll check on that. It's got a 5 inch blade and an overall length of 9.5 inches. The handle scales are pinned on and they're made of G10. So really premium handle material. Very, very ergonomic. It is not coated. It is blued which I kind of like that because if it starts getting messed up or whatnot, I can just sand this down and re-blue it myself and get it to right the way I like it. It has a scandy grind with a secondary bevel. It came very, very sharp out of the package. Has your bow drill divot in the handle. It's lightweight. It has a very good balance point right in the center of the knife. So it makes it really agile and comfortable and this is just something that feels like you could do a lot of good work with so I'm really looking forward to starting to use this knife now the sheath is leather pouch sheath not sure who makes it I, you know that kind of stuff always changes I know at one point it was Condor I don't know if it still is but it's a, it's a nice decent sheath and they do have an option when you order to get custom kydex for it which I like to just do my own kydex or have my own guys do my kydex so I just went for the regular sheath which is fine by me came sharp out of the box very impressed with it for the package so let's uh, put this thing in some wood and see what it does Okay. So first thing, got a little piece of right in the rain paper. Let's check the edge. Right in the rain paper is quite a bit thicker than regular paper. So I don't have any regular notebook paper. To give you a good test, but based on that, I mean it, it's workably sharp out of the package, no problem. Got a couple sticks here, just kind of get a, a feel for the finesse of the edge. Of course, this is freshly knocked down green wood. I'm not seeing any pine around here, so I can't do like the one one stick fire test. So I kind of like that one, so I might be using that some more. As long as I have pine. But it, I can't overstate how this feels that it's lightweight, center balanced, and you can choke up to the blade without, it's not even really a choil, but you can just choke up there comfortably and get in there and do your cutting tasks, carving, whatever. Very nice. So no problem with that. Having the 90 degree spine, one of the big reasons, not the only, but one of the big reasons that we want a 90 degree spine is to strike a ferro rod. Which my new favorite ferro rod, which also came with the knife. Well, it didn't. Okay, <laughs> let me qualify that. It doesn't come with the knife, but I ordered it at the same time as the knife. This is the six inch by half inch ferro rod that Dave sells on his store. Now I've seen these ferro rods with the same diameter and length sold on eBay, really cheap, like 17 bucks. 
but they're too soft. They're, they don't seem to work as good. This one just makes fantastic sparks. I mean, you get it right there, and they just want to sit. They sit and dance and burn. I was yesterday when I was testing this. I put a cotton round on the floor of my garage, and was sitting there throwing the sparks, seeing if I could light it from like four feet away, and I was able to do it. I mean, it took a took a minute to hit it from that distance for aim, but. Get that in there, right there. I mean, just look at those sparks. So it can do that with absolutely no problem. The other thing would be like uh, scraping bark. Maybe if you got the right kind of wood and you're trying to get some of that light fluff, tinder. Start your fire with the ferro rod. This thing just works awesome at that. Awesome. Or just maybe you're trying to fabricate something and you need to get that bark off. It's probably the one of the best knives I've ever had that does that particular task. And of course you can baton with this. Do I need to do that? Well, we'll do it anyway. Let's see if my camera, if I can get it from that angle. I'll have to adjust. No problem. So we want to process some wood down for kindling this is going to be a really good tool for that this doesn't have really like fancy grind or it's not like ooh look how sexy that knife is it's not one of those knives this is a knife that just is built to perform not to wow people with the way it looks. Even though it does, I think it looks nice. I really like the handle. And being that this is an eighth of an inch, just the, the, the short scanty grind, mostly flat, when you're trying to get down into these smaller pieces, it just makes it that much easier. And I can just guide it and just keep getting it smaller and smaller and smaller so yeah it, it can baton and this is generally what you're gonna baton most cases I know in the past we take our BK nines and our big knives and we want to baton stuff that's this big but really you want to use an axe for that batoning is for things like this you just want to take one stick and make everything you need to get that fire started out of that one stick now we got that let's try a feather stick with this Feels really damp. Let's try this way. There. Much better. This knife's got a lot of uses, a lot of finesse. It's not a chopping knife. I mean, if you had to do something 
Maybe you want to get a notch started or something like that. I mean, I guess you could. Me, I would probably use my baton to get a more precise notch. Let's use uh, let's use this one. So, works great. Okay, let's compare this to a couple other well-known, very popular bushcraft knives. And yes, I'm going to call it bushcraft. If anyone doesn't like it, uh, then kiss my ass. I'm not changing the name. That word's been around forever. So, there's that. Here's my Topps Bob, which has been my main go-to knife here for better part of a couple months since it really started taking hold to me. Now we've got G10 handles, micarta handles on this particular model. There are models that do have G10 but they're not this nice smooth G10 like that. It's more of like a traction coat. The Brothers of Bushcraft is thicker uh, by I think uh, three times Pretty sure this is 3 8 this is 1 8 A uh, thicker handle, a little bit more weight, a little bit more purchase. But you can do some heavier work with this. You can baton some bigger stuff. But let's compare it to Dave's criteria. 5 inch blade, yes. High carbon steel, yes. Full tang, yes. 90 degree spine, no. It's it's 90 degree but they just it's just barely it's not sharp enough I haven't tried it on this yet see and, and it's coated on that part too so by by Dave's criteria this isn't a good bushcraft knife I mean granted I can use my mods and get sparks off it with that but we're looking at the knife itself, the, the spine. Can't do it, and it is coated. And you can't strike with flint because it's coated. So this is only getting a partial bushcraft score. Now it does everything that's important to me. I'm okay with that, but if you're gonna get a knife and you wanna actually go out and practice and learn woodcraft, bushcraft, whatever, you're gonna be a lot better off with something like this than you are with this. As much as I like this knife, which I love this knife, I really, really, really love this knife. That's why I have two of them. But this is going to be able to do more than this can. And that's just the honest to God's truth. No prejudices or anything like that. Now the other one that could do probably the closest job to this, which is going to be considerably less if you're on a tight budget, is going to be the Mora Bushcraft Black. And I know I've said I'm not that big a fan of Mora, but I am a fan of this one. It just, it feels more robust to me. It doesn't feel featherweight. I don't like featherweight knives. But has this got a 90 degree spine? Yes. I mean, this one. The Bushcraft Black is one of the best 90 degree spine knives out there. I mean, I'd say it's maybe a hair, a hair sharper than this one. Uh, also, Scandi Ground, it's not full tang. Uh, it's not coated though, so you should be able to do all the other stuff, but even though it's not full tang, the tang's only up to about here, I have not heard of anybody having a problem with it. I know Dave Canterbury has beat the living crap out of this knife and not had a problem. So, if you're starting out and you're on a budget, this is still going to be the one that I'm going to recommend to you. But if you want something a little bit nicer, that just feels great in hand. And this has got a little bit, I, I just like the, the blade shape a little bit more to this one. More, more of a drop point. 
it, I mean, this, I, technically I'd say that's a drop point, but it's almost like a, looks a little more clip point than this one. This almost goes to spear point. So they can do pretty much most of the same stuff, but other than that, out of what I've got, that's about it. Now let's compare it to my one true first love, which I haven't mentioned in probably five seconds or so. <laughs> you all know this one, right? So this is what I used for the most time over the years. And if you just, this is going to do just a lot more big heavy stuff. I could baton a lot larger pieces of wood. But I can feather stick and I can notch and I can do all that stuff with this. I can't choke up with it because I, mean, I can get close, but there's no choil or anything here. And when it comes out of the box, it looks nothing like this. It's got freaking truck bed liner on it or whatever the hell that stuff is, that black traction coating, which you have to take off. And in order to take it off, you got to use some pretty nasty chemicals to get it off right, and then you got to polish it up. This is Becker's are the big knives you get when you want to do a project, uh, make it your own. But as far as a bushcraft, you know, I could see it as a survival knife. I mean, technically speaking, this is not a woods knife. Technically speaking, this is a combat knife. This was designed as an alternative to the K Bar USMC by Ethan Becker. We just kind of adopted it for that because we like it. And I can, I can chop small trees with this if I needed to or baton chop them a lot more than I can with this. But for all that stuff I was just doing, I mean, can I scrape the bark? I mean, I can on this, okay. Actually, I'm kind of surprised that it did it that well. But, you know, can I strike a ferro rod with it? No, can't do it, and I don't have anywhere on the back to do it either, so this is not going to help you get your fire lit. This one will. This is like your all-purpose around camp. Every task that you could possibly need to do with your knife, you got this one right here. And then, I might, me personally, I'm a multi-knife guy, so I might have my larger survival knife, which would be like the PLSK1, or my BK7 or BK9 or something like that. And I'm generally going to have a small uh, axe or hatchet with me, like my SCX2 with the C2G Fab Kydex sheath. So, I mean, even though I keep a ferro rod on this knife sheath, that's because I have other things I can use as strikers in my gear. I cannot strike it with this unless I use the blade, which I don't want to do. So, overall, the only thing even close to this is the more bushcraft black, but... I mean, plastic handle, it's not full tang. It feels good in the hand, but this is just the best all around woodcraft, bushcraft knife that I have ever purchased myself. So I'm very pleased with it and I would highly recommend it. And that is, there's no biases in that either. Uh, you, I can't sell these on Amazon. Uh, I don't get any kickbacks or anything like that from the Pathfinder School. I'm just telling you for your benefit. That if you want to do those kinds of things and practice, this is a good night for that. So there you go, folks. Pathfinder trade knife. This is one of those knives I think is just... A lot of people know about it. A lot of people that follow the Pathfinder stuff and Habilis, and they know about this knife. But overall, when people are having conversations about bushcraft knives or survival knives or something like that, I think this one gets left out a lot. And I think it should be in there. I should think it should be toward the top as far as knives that can get the job done. When you're talking knives that, well, it can do everything and then it can chop and then it can dig a ditch and it can do it. We're not talking about that. We're talking about actual knife work. This one is outstanding at it. And I cannot recommend it enough. So if get a chance if you're looking for something a little bit different than what we've uh, shown thus far on the channel uh, I think you'll be very impressed with this this I think they're going to be straightly Tiger G10 they did also have gun stock which actually I tried to order gun stock this doesn't look like gun stock it actually looks kind of like in the middle between gun stock and Tiger 
Although Tiger, I think, has got a lot more orange in it. So I don't know. Either way, whatever it is, I'm happy with it. <laughs> no problems there. So I'm Chris from Prepare My 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. There's going to be a lot of links below. So it'll take you to the Pathfinder store if you want to check one of these things out. If you're thinking about getting one for yourself. And maybe some other reviews, videos, things like that. Like, like Dave's done on his own knife. Other than that, uh, be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter. And I will be back with some more videos for you soon. Thanks, guys.